Hello everybody and welcome back and uh, right now we finished the SQL injection part which co uh, could have been for you a little bit uh, hard to understand and I always encourage you to read more about it that will make you understand it a little bit better and also you can uh, watch other tutorials online on how to perform the SQL injection with SQL map or manually. The more tutorials you watch the better you will get and so on. But right now uh, we want to cover another attack which is the XML injection. So let's first talk about it. Well, uh, some applications may do their searches in XML file or XML database, which, is, which basically allows us to perform the XML injection. And when user sends the XML format information that application should read. So users basically as an input send the XML format information and the application or the web server basically reads that and if we type it as a code or yeah well as a code it might interpret it as a part of the code if it is not filtered correctly. It is the same principle as in the previous two attacks which is the command injection and SQL injection. So basically all of these attacks are just badly written website code or badly filter user input. So in order for you to understand it better, you will need to know the basic XML structure. It basically looks uh, similar to the HTML. It has a root node, child node element, and I believe it also has those two, those two arrows that are at the beginning and at the end of every command. So it is very, uh, it looks a lot like the HTML code. So let us actually uh, let us uh, see the practical use of this attack. So what we want to do go once again onto the virtual machine OWASP and go once again onto the IP address. So let me just go back one or two or three times. So once you are here you want to go to the B WAP, which is right here. I don't believe we went here in the previous videos, but this is the first time, so just click right here. And it will open up something that looks like this. So now what we want to do, uh, we want to, first of all, we want to log in, as it says right here, enter your credentials, be bug, so you can just log in right here, or if you want to, you can also train your brute forcing attack, uh, just add to some username list or password list these two words and run your brute force attack in Hydra or in Burp Suit in order to practice a little bit, but we won't be doing that right now since we did it twice in previous videos. So let me just log in right here with the specified username and specified password. Set the security level, uh, for now on we will leave it on low since this is the uh, tutorial video we want to show you uh, from the beginning how it looks like and once you log in don't save password. Once you log in right here you want to search for the XPath injection search. So as we can see right here we have a bunch of the uh, methods right here that we can use to practice our attacks and what we want to search for is let me just find it a one injection server-side SQL injection, we covered that, whoops, SQL XPath, here it is, so XML XPath injection search. Once you find that, just click on it right here and click on hack. And you will see that we load a simple page which basically searches movies by their gender. So as we can see the action movies, if you click here search, it will print out six of these movies. You can have some of the other options, for example, horror movies. Uh, you click here search and we get two movies, which is Resident Evil and The Underworld. And you can also check the science fiction and click here on search. And you basically get the same, same output as the action movies. So what we want to do, uh, you first thing you might notice is there isn't any user input right here. There isn't any, sp any specific field right here that allows us to type something. 
Well, we don't really need it. This search box right here, which chooses between th three types, is actually our user input. You do not type it, but you do send your choice to the server. So let us just intercept this packet real quick. So we go onto our burp suit, we turn the intercept on, and now what we want to do is go onto our page and search for the action movies, for example. So just click here on search. Our page will load since we are intercepting it. And if we go right here to the to the uh, packet that we received in the intercept, we can see that the in the link there is a specified genre which says action, and the action which says search. So these two are correspondent to the uh, to this right here and this right here. And let's see what happens if we, for example, change this packet before we forward it to the server. So let's try to inject ac action and then once again inject apostrophe after that. Let's see how the server will handle this packet. So we uh, basically sending action and then the apostrophe, so we forward this. And let's see what server basically gave us. And sure enough, it gave us the invalid expression, which means we successfully found the vulnerability. Warning simple XML element XPath invalid expression in this file right here on line 158. Warning simple and another warning evaluation failed in the same file on line 158. No movies were found. So we can see that we that uh, the server actually read this as a part of code. Now let's check something else as well. So let me just search for the action. Wait, we have the intercept on once again. Let's turn it off. Let's go to the page itself. So we are back to the same thing. Now what we want to do is exploit and possibly find some usernames and passwords, if there are any. What we want to check next is whether this application will uh, interpret the part of this word right here as well as the whole word. So once we send action, it prints out the action movies. But let's try that again by sending only a part of that word. So let us just turn our intercept on and search once again. So now that it is stuck, we go to our burp suit. And why is it so slow? Here it is. And let us delete a part of this world. Uh, world, pardon me. <laughs> word. So delete ion and leave act. And let's see if the server will recognize this as a part of the word action. So if we turn off the intercept, we can see that we got the same output as if we search for the action. Now, with anyone with a little bit of knowledge of the XML, will know basically that since it gives the same result as the action word, we know that it uses a function which is called contains. Now, contains basically does uh, the same thing as it says. Uh, for example, it searches for all of the uh, results that contain uh, even a part of the world. So, for example, act is contained in action. That's why it gave us the same output. Now that we know uh, that it uses that uh, function, which is contains, once again, we can do uh, something very very funny as you will see right here it is it could be a little bit uh, hard to understand but basically we will try to select once again to something similar as the in the previous video in the sql injection when we said one equals one we will try to type here something like contains one one which will print out all of the results in the uh, in the database. Let me just show you. So we turned on our intercept and if we search right here, what we want to go to is burp suit. So let me just go back to it. Whoops, not other applications. We want to click right here. 
and let us delete action first. So we delete action and what we want to type right here is the apostrophe, then the closed right parentheses, then the closed bigger right parentheses, then slash, let me just find it, slash star and then two slashes and then once again star, then we type the left open bigger parentheses and then we type here contains and then open left smaller parentheses apostrophe one closed apostrophe comma open apostrophe pardon me so comma open apostrophe one so you will see that if we forward this packet so I'm not really sure why it doesn't give us the forward option. Here it is. It is just a little bit slow. What is this? We do not want this. So let us forward this packet and let's see what output we got from this server. No movies were found. Well, oh, wait, wait a second. Let me just try this once again. I think I know what's the problem. The problem could be that I deleted the deleted the action. So let us just do that once again. So search. We go to the perp suit. Uh, my, it is a little bit slow. So we type the same thing once again. So just type the same thing that you typed previously. So let us just do the it starts with apostrophe, then the open right parentheses, open big right parentheses. Then what we do is slash star two slashes. Let me just move my mouse two slashes star. And then we want the open left parentheses open contains contains open smaller right, uh, left parentheses uh, apostrophe one apostrophe comma open one, open apostrophe one, and that's about it. So let me just see if this will work. If we send that, no movies were found. Well, not really sure why it says this. Let's just try something else. I think I know what the problem is. Okay, I realized the problem was that I was missing a character, so let us do that once again. So, intercept on, search, it is stuck, so we go to the burp suit and we type the, in the gener, we type the same thing, but follow up with me right now. We need to add a little bit of something else, so let us just start off with the uh, apostrophe. Then open left parentheses, uh, pardon me, open right parentheses, op open right bigger parentheses, uh, slash, and then the star sign. And then we want to use the pipeline, which is the upper line. And then we continue with the same, so two slashes, and then the star sign again. And then we open the left bigger parentheses, contains, which is the function, and then we open apostrophe, or open left parentheses, smaller ones, apostrophe one, apostrophe comma, open apostrophe one. So let me just copy this so I can show you how it looks if you can't see it. So I will just copy it. I will open leaf pad. And let me paste it right here. You should see it a little bit better. Just see if I can, I can't enlarge this. So this is the command that we are using right here. So what we did in previously, we basically forgot this pipe command, this pipe uh, sign right here. So let us just forward this packet and see what happens. So I don't know why this pops up, forward. And let's go to the page right now. And as you can see, we got bunch of the options that aren't really movies. As we can see, Neo, Trinity, and then 
randomly it becomes, uh, there, there is a movie and then we have some of the numbers right here basically what these are this is the uh, the this is the username this is the password for that for this username as well as this Alice love zombies as well as this Thor and Asgard so we basically successfully exploited the XML database with that one command and we can see the usernames and passwords of different people right here and it gave us in the list as if these f as if these were movies so that's how you manually exploit the xml uh, with the xml injection now let's do the same now uh, well not do let me show you how you can automate this process with a tool but i will show you, uh, show you this in the next lecture and then after that we will start the cross-site scripting attacks. So I hope I see you in the next lecture and take care. Bye.